Well, today's episode, as you know, v- Wrestling Revolver just had their last pay-per-view of 2022. Can't wait to see what 2023 is going to bring us. But we're going to be talking about what really took place in season finale by Wrestling Revolver. And of course, we got GCW's Wasted Time, where, of course, Nick Gage puts his world title on the line against G- uh, Cold Radrick, and many other things took place. And of course, we got the latest Choco Pro show, 273 with three matches. And then finally, we continue with more of New Japan Pro Wrestling, but this time we're going to focus only on the Super Junior Tag League matches. So I think this is day 11 in my, in my, if I can remember. But yes, but anyway, we also got some interesting news updates. We definitely got to be sharing what's been going on in the world of pro wrestling. So. Let's get ready for another episode of Deleted Wrestle Zone. Are you ready? Get up, get up! Get up, get up! Get up, get up! Get up, get up! Welcome everybody to Deleted Wrestle Zone, all things that is pro wrestling with AEW, NXT, New Japan Pro Wrestling, Impact Wrestling, National Wrestling Alliance, various promotions, wrestlers, matches, and championships. I am your host, Jay Rod here. So, let's begin with Wrestling Revolver with their final pay-per-view of 2022 season finale, which is, I feel, it's appropriate because these guys only throw in one pay-per-view a month. I got nothing against that, to be honest with you. But it seems very interesting. Now, this took place recently on the 3rd of December, which is this past Saturday. So let's get to it right now. It opened up with Ray Phoenix taking on Zachary Wentz. Man, I have to say this was a good opener. Now, these guys, I you know they're going to throw in some spots that you definitely are going to enjoy. But it makes you put a, be a bit of a biased wrestler like you wouldn't expect how this is going to end but it was phoenix in the other hand who picked up the win by applying the driver onto zachary giving him the wins but he posted out he did a post-match promo where's most emotional and all this and i think it shows that he started out as an underground wrestler just like everyone else has and i think that's what makes him happy that sometimes it takes you back to where it all began. And I think it's a good thing. And I think Zach felt the same way too. Now next match. We got women's action. We got Billy Starks. Taking on Marina Shafir. Now that I think this is Marina Shafir's debut. Being in this promotion. But you know for a fact. That this is going to uh, be a different interesting type of match. Now Marina Shafir as you know. She's a different type of breed wrestler. She Knows a bit of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and other type of martial arts stuff. But how would Billy Starks overcome that? Well, she wouldn't because apparently she ended up in the, in the guillotine headlock. And she had no other choice but to tap. So now it appears that Wrestling Revolver, mostly with the women's division, are going to have a problem. Get it? They got a problem. <laughs> now, we get a very interesting video message from Johnny Revolver. Now we all know who that is. It's John Morrison, Johnny Nitro, Johnny Impact, Johnny Mundo, Johnny Caballero, however you want to call him, or as I like to call him, Johnny Multiple. It appears he's going to make his return back to Wrestling Revolver on March 4th, but he won't be coming alone. He's bringing his lovely wife, La Huera Loca, Teo Valkyrie, in tow. So that's going to be interesting. So we're only a couple of months away from that. Let's see what they're going to bring into the table. Now our next match is a golden ticket scramble match. Now, whoever wins this type of match will get an opportunity for any wrestling revolver title of their choosing at any time, any place, anywhere. So here's who we had. We have 
One Called Manders versus Rocky Romero versus Fulton versus Jake Chris versus Crash Jackson versus Steve Macklin and then finally the Monster Hunter Matthew Palmer. Now this anything could go in these type of scramble matches. Everybody knows that. But the one thing that was surprisingly is this. This is the second time whenever Crash Jackson is about to end the match in his favor. Steve Macklin takes the opportunity and pins um who who was it he pinned again? Oh yeah. He um he pins Fulton. This was supposed to be Crash Jackson moment. But for some reason, Steve Macklin takes the credit for this one. And, of course, we wanted to know, as soon as he won the match, who's he going to, what title is he going to go for? When is he going to take it? When is he going to challenge? He just kept it all close to the vest. So, anything could happen. Now, our next match, this is the, the, the Revolver Remix title. This is a title that, of course, recently... Alex Shelley took. He said he wasn't going to defend it, but he had to. He ended up facing against Masha Slamovich. But Masha wanted to... Here's the thing. The champion makes the, the, the stipulation what type of match he wanted. But in this case, it became a uh, Masha wanted death match. But, of course, Alex Shelley wasn't having it. So, it ended with just a straight-up match. You know this is what's going to fall in the favor of Alex Shelley when he applied, of course, the um, Border City stretch. Ended right there. So we knew it was going to go that way. Now our next match is an Iowa death match. We have Jessica versus Alley Catch. Now Jessica has been at full-blown war with Alley Catch. Of course, we had that those idiots, the unit, always trying to interfere in her matches. Try to prove better, but this time... This would have been in Ali Catch's favor because she's been involved in death matches before. But anything could happen. You know, there was glass, weapons, anything that could be used. But it was Jessica with the Kishi driver onto Ali Catch to pick up the win. But in the end, Jessica wanted to show respect to Ali Catch. That piece of garbage, JT Dunn, was not having it. JT Dunn doesn't believe that respect is given. They have to be earned it. Because he thinks that he is the top guy. That's how it goes. But we'll see what happens. Because for right now, this is the biggest case. Ali Catch is a member of the unit. One loss from the unit. And there's two more matches involving them. But yeah. Next match, we have the, the Revolver Tag Team titles on the line. We have members of the unit and those other weasels. Infrared, Tyler Matrix, and Logan James. Versus Dad Scout, Dan the Dad, and Jake Manning. Versus the champions, OGK, Matt Taven, and Mike uh, Bennett. However, Infrared tried to play the smart game where, they, in fact, they actually tried to stay out and like let the other two teams beat the crap out of each other. Which was smart, but sooner or later, it was going to overturn one way or the other. Because, you know, at some point, they had to step in. Which, unfortunately, they did. But, luckily... It was Dan the Dad who picked up the win when he applied the backpack stunner onto Logan James. One, two, three. Dad Scout become the new tag team champions. Now, this is the second loss by the unit. But as for OGK, they can't believe it. Everybody was shocked that Dan the Dad, the Dan Sc Dad Scout actually won. However, the celebration was cut short. Apparently, Gia Miller shows up. Sending a direct message to the new tag team champions, and that is, of course, you're not gonna. I had to figure who was sending the message because it doesn't take a genius. Gia Miller's there, and we all know who her boyfriend is, and he's also a member of the Bullet Club, and his tag partner, the finesse, Chris Bay. So they set out to say that in March fourth, they'll be coming for those tag titles. So that means their celebration, their title could be a short one. But only we know. But they, they said the time and date is going to be on March 4th. So that's a long way to go from there. Our next match is the PWR, the Wrestling Revolver 
World Championship, Trey Miguel versus JT Dunn. I have to say this is one of the most brutal matches, but more intensified matches of them all. JT Dunn has always tried to sit claims he is at the top of his game, but this is where Trey Miguel, on the other hand, he is stepping up his game no matter what. You know, he already lost the Remix title a month ago. Now he's coming for this title, and I think this sets it all. No matter what he does, everything, even Alley Cats tried to get involved. In Fred, none of it worked. The unit were losing their edge until finally the JT Dunn, and then JT Dunn made the obvious choice to take out one referee. Then he took on another. And then finally, uh, Trey Miguel did a somewhat of a similar of a tequila shot move that I seen Zuzuki do. That gave the match in favor of Trey Miguel to finally become the new world, the new Re Revolver World Champion. However, JT Dunn whacked in the back, not having, and of course, here comes Steve Macklin cashing in his golden ticket, and under few, who knows how many seconds, he becomes the new world champion. This is the most, it's almost similar to what we've seen in Impact Wrestling with Moose, but the only difference is Moose did this in the moment of where Alexander was with his family. This is nothing like that. So, it's crazy, but it is what it is. Now, our next match, this is a dream match. We have Mike Bailey versus Kenta. Oh, my God. What a great match. I have to say, this is one of the most impressive matches. These guys are fantastic strikers, but how was this going to play out when I figured sooner or later that Kenta was going to apply the GTS, go to sleep onto Mike Bailey, and good night. He wins the match. Now, once he was celebrating his match, oh my God, here comes that that loser, Damian Chambers, once again bragging, complaining, and moaning about how he is not involved in the match, and he got his ass handed to him by none other than John Moxley. Well, at least that takes care of one problem. But now our main event is Hell of War match between Shane Strickland and Rick. Um, Rich Swan. However, this match had three different type of rounds. The first one is a straight up match. This one was won really quickly by Rich Swan. Uh, I don't know how many seconds, maybe eight, ten seconds, I'm not sure. And then the next one was a no DQ match. Anything goes, any weapons, but it was Shane Strickley who won. I kind of figured it was going to fall in the favor. But the next one is a military van type where you put someone in a van, you close the door. And this one, they went everywhere around the people. They had to turn on the house lights so people can see where they're at. But it was Rich Swan who shoved Strickland into the van. And he won. And Rich Swan get his re retribution after what happened a couple of months ago. So I have to say this was a pretty good show. And I think I'm a big fan. I think I'm enjoying watching Re Wrestling Revolver a whole lot more. They throw in the best shows. If you guys never seen Wrestling Revolver, check them out. You can subscribe to them on Fight TV for only $4.99. So I'm just telling you guys out there. So I think that's pretty much it. So let's move on with GCW. Okay. GCW Waste of Time also happened on the 3rd of December. Opened up with Starboard Charlie versus Jack Hartwheel. Another good opener. I liked it. It was very fun. I have to say it was very interesting because, you know, uh, Starboard Charlie, he's like on a mission now since he came back from injury. It was pretty good. But it was, of course, a cross face by Starboy Charlie that finished the deal and allowed for Jar cartwheel for no other choice but the tap. Now our next match is a very interesting tag team match. We have the Bang Bros, consistent of Davy Bang and August Matthews. Now don't be compared about Bang Bros from the adult sides as we've been hearing all the time. They faced off Axton Ray and Shane Mercer. I have to say, 
what a great combination between Axton and Shane. Um, I mean, look, sometimes we've seen wrestlers like Shane and Axton, they work only alone as singles competitors, but seeing them how they work together, that is something good. And we haven't seen a Shane Mercer's other tag team partner, KGB, for quite some time. But I would like to see more of Axton and Shane team up more. And I think many of you, if you saw it, you guys know what I'm talking about. But it's great. I loved it. Great cohesive unit between those two, even though they this is their first time. But I like how um, Axton made sure that Shane Mercer ends the match with the Moonsault Battery on Davy Bang to finish the match. But I did say, Axton Ray and Shane Mercer, great team. I have to say, great combination. I like it. Next up, we got a hardcore match. We have Sawyer Wreck versus Mad Man uh, Pondo. This didn't go so long, but I can tell you this one ended in a choke slam thanks to Sawyer Wreck. Just like that, adios, good night. Now, our next match we have is the GCW Tag Team Titles. We have Second Gear Crew, Matthew Justice and Mance Warner, desperately trying to get their titles back against Los Macizos, uh, Miedo Extremo and Ciclopse. And, of course, old schoolers, we got Two Skull Scorpio and Sandman. Now, these type of matches, anything could happen. So, basically, um, anything could uh, go either way. But... It was Ciclopse who picked up the win when he pinned Matthew Justice, giving him the opportunity to show they retain the titles. But however, uh, Two Skull Scorpio and of course Sandman told them, told them Asisos, get that get their butts back in the ring because they don't want them to leave just yet. There's a reason why. They told them to play, get down, get down, get down, get down. That's right, Jungle Boogie was being played. So they wanted to get into the party. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. So you got to get down with, with two cold Scorpio. Next match, we have Jimmy Lloyd versus Jake Landers. I have to say, very intensified match, especially for a guy like Jimmy Lloyd. But I did like how Jimmy Lloyd managed to end the match with the dr a driver position and blammo, giving him a win. Now, Jimmy Lloyd, I rarely see him win matches, but there's nothing wrong with that. Next up, we got Effie versus John Wayne Murdoch. Now, we know John Wayne Murdoch is a tough SOP. He doesn't take any BS from anybody. But when it comes to Effie, Effie, he is a different type of breed, if you know what I'm talking about. So, I don't know exactly what John Wayne Murdoch will do, but it was interesting. But one thing led to another. It was Effie who picked up the win when he applied the jackknife onto Murdoch. And boom! Wins just like that. Very surprising. Now our next match. This one is the most brutal, more intensified match I've ever seen. Tony Deppen versus Jordan Oliver. Now, it's a good match. But I think I like how the story is being told because... Tony Deppen, he is driven by anger. He, if you guys remember clearly on the of um, while back, he told Nick Gage that he is sick and tired of him being the top guy. He felt that you need to be moved. I'm taking that title. I'm going to be the one. He thinks that this is his company, and I think that shows that he means business. That he's not BSing anybody. But of course, he did have Jordan Oliver right where he wanted him, whacking him right in the neck, and of course. He he was out, referee called it. But you can tell that Tony Deppin's on a mission. He's out to prove that he is the guy who should be the face of the company, not Nick Gage. But how does Nick Gage feel? Well, he's in a match against Cold Rarick. You know this match is going to be in death matches ways. Basically, all sorts of sharp objects. Don't forget the pizza cutter. But it took a pile driver through the glass by Nick Gage onto Cold Rarick. To retain the title. And of course. Out of the blue. Tony Deppen shows up. Trying to tell him. That that title. On December 16th. At America's Most Wanted. Is going home with him. But you know Nick Gage. He's like. 
He's not going to back down. He doesn't give a shit about what he has to say. That's how it works with Nick. But we will see what happens because I can tell Tony Deppin's on a mission. So we'll see what happens on December 16th. So I think that's pretty much it. So let's go with Choco Pro. Okay, Choco Pro 273. Opened up with Sayaka Obihiro taking on Chon Shiru. Um, don't know how many times they faced, but it was a pretty good match. Um, I wasn't sure how this was going to go, but at some point during the match, I thought Sayaka Obihiro would have won this one, but somehow it was um, Chon Shiru with the Gori Bomb twice one on the wall, one on the mat. That sealed the deal for him to pick up the win. I wasn't sure how that was going to end. But it did. Next up, we got Tokiko Kirahara teaming up with veteran Cherry to take on Trans Am Hiroshi and Yazu Urano. I have to say, interesting, intensified match. Because, as you know, there um, I've seen Trans Am. He is a very unique individual every single time I see him. <coughs> but as... Uh, for Yazu, also another tough wrestler, uh, well known in the independents, but um, not not much excitement for me from him. But he got the job done. But it was in fact their opponents that take on. You see, Tokiko has a little bit of striking capabilities. As for Cherry, she has a bit of the judo, so <coughs> you had to keep an eye on that. But Transam was the one who made sure of that by. Uh, make stay away from Cherry's possible um, submission moves. If you've seen Cherry, she knows how to do that. But he was able to apply an arm bar onto Kukiko Kirahara and forcing her to tap out. So that was a pretty good moment. Now our next match, we have their main event. Chiko Shikawa taking on Prominent's very own Mochi Natsumi. Now I know what you guys are thinking. If you guys know I'm a fan of Prominent's, you probably ask, is she brought in some hard cools rules match? Nope, not entirely that. Um, it's just a straight up match like any other. Uh, <coughs> some of you may question why would Mochi Natsumi go to um got uh to Choco Pro? Well, for those who don't know, I did a little research. It turns out that Emi Sakura herself trained Mo um, Mochi Natsumi, so it makes sense. I saw a a, tw a tweet where, of course, Emi Sakura was staying close attention on Mochi Natsumi's performance because, as a teacher, you want to know how much have they, they have grown. I wouldn't be surprised if she comes back and challenges her into a match. You know, that's something I'm sure. Uh, somebody may quit. Can she also come to the United States? I don't know if any promotion would be interested in her, but if I was. Uh, Emi Sakura, I would put her in a got to move show. That's how I would do it if that was the case. But a lot intensified by um, Chi, who was not determined to give up no matter what. Even though Mochi is more of the aggressor type in this match, but it was with a Styles clash that sealed the deal. And I think Mochi mentioned on tweet on Twitter that I think she was impressed by her, but she still has a long way to go. To learn, I think it's a good point from her. You know, she we know she has what it takes to go to the top. I mean, not to mention her rivalry with Meshruga, but she has a long way to go to get there. And I think that's pretty much it. What we have, but let's move on to the Jankin. I wasn't sure how this was gonna go down, but it was Cherry who picked up the win I, because she ended up in the finals with Tokiko, her tag partner she lost with, but that made it up. So I think that's pretty much it with Choco Pro. I believe it's time for our last review, New Japan Pro Wrestling. Okie dokie. Now let's do our final review, New Japan Pro Wrestling. As I said earlier in the episode... We're going to focus mostly on, right now, the Super Junior Tag League matches. 
I think we're in day 11 in New Japan, so let's get started. So our first match, we got the time splitter, Kushida, and his tag partner, the Jet, Kevin Knight. They take on Bullet Clubs, Chris Bay, and Ace Austin. Now, I believe in this match, we see as Bullet Club as... The face, the the favorite, one of the favorites in this tournament, but Kushida and Jet are still at the bottom of the pile of the tournament. But it was the the fold by Ace Austin and Ace Austin onto Kevin Knight, but it was uh, Chris Bay with the pinfall onto him to pick up the win, giving him their next two points. Next match we have the Flying Tigers, Tiger Mask and. Uh, Robbie Eagles taking on the Wild Hips, consistent of Clark Connors and Ryusuke Taguchi. Fun match, very interesting, but you know how this ends with Taguchi pulling down his pants, showing his red at his red underwear. Same thing with Clark Connors, who picked up his bad habits. <coughs> Excuse me, but that does not end there because it was Taguchi who picked up the win when he applied his ass. Right in front of Tiger Mask. And, and I, if you guys know this or not, Tiger Mask never did trust Taguchi because he's all about having a little bit of fun. But but that's how it is for Taguchi. You can't stop him from that. Next match, we have, once again, the most hated group in New Japan, House of Torture. Dick Togo and Sho taking on Titan and Bushi of Los Ingobernables. De Japón, or as we call them, L.I.J. A very good match. I loved it. I love how Bushi and uh, uh, Titan can go work together. But whenever we see House of Torture, you know wherever Sho and Dick Togar are, the other two idiots are there close by. We're talking about Evil and the Yujiro Takashi. I would have assumed as a fan that the other members of L.I.J., either... Sonata or Naito were going to show up to give them a helping hand. But no, somehow Titan and Bushi were able to overcome this obstacle. But it was, of course, once again, the Ankel Immortal by T Titan onto show. But it was Bushi who picked up the win. So that gives them the, the next two points. And right now, uh, as you know, House of Torture only has two points. That's about it. They're still also at the bottom at the moment. There's no way that team could move on to the finals. Next up, we have, of course, Sauce Heart, consistent of El Linda Man and Alex Zane taking on Chaos's Yo and Leo Rush. But this one has a very unique type of feeling in this match. There was a bit of tensions between both El Linda Man and, Sh and Yo. I've never seen Yo this riled up before i don't know what it was but in this case it kind of fits into that um in that thing in, in every way possible but it was of course yo with a somewhat of a bridge in the back pinned alex zane to give them one but post-match he and el linda man seemed like they wanted to get at it alex zane tried to pull away alex zane away from uh pull el linda man away from yo and, of course, Leo Rush was trying to do the same thing. I wouldn't be surprised if we see a match between those two down the line. And that's something I know for a fact it could happen. Now, our main event, we have Suzuki Goons, Doiki, and Yoshinobu Kanemaru taking on Catch 2-2, um, Francisco Akira, and, of course, TJP. I thought this match was pretty good. But the one thing is this. TJP acts like he thinks he's a fortune teller or he's like... A human crystal ball but there's one thing he did not anticipate is the the whiskey that of course was spit upon by Kanemaru onto both um Akira and of course that idiot Gideon Gray it did allow them but it was Doiki who picked up the pinfall on Francisco Akira uh, and I think this was a pretty good match giving them their moment now of course here's the rub on this one Catch two 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 are at the top of the of the tournament, but there's no way for um, Doiki and Kanemaru can get to the top. But however, since they pinned the champions, we know there is a possibility. The rule of thumb: if you pin the champions, you get a possible 
title shot in their pocket. So they can cash it in anytime they want. So the obvious is, will they do it sooner or later? We don't know. Because we've still got one month to go. We, we've still got a little bit to go until we get to Wrestle Kingdom 17 on January 4th. That's the thing. So we'll see what happens then. So I think that's pretty much it with New Japan Pro Wrestling. I believe it's time for news updates. Okay. Here are some updates going on. Now, for all you Yoshi Wrestler fans, if you know of this person or not, uh, her name is Madeline. Now, I've been following Madeline for almost two years. Now, she is a uh, MMA fighter. Um, she was involved in, in that back in May of 2023, in 2017. But she's been in pro wrestling for almost um, two years later after that on May of 2019. Mostly, she operates in uh, World Woman Pro Wrestling Diana. Uh, she has appeared in some promotions, such as Ice Ribbon, a uh, few others. But um, the reason I'm talking about her is that uh, I follow her on her on her social media. I even um, subscribe to her YouTube channel. But she posted something in, in her YouTube channel recently where she talks about returning to MMA. She hasn't done MMA for quite some time. Um... She talks about doing that this uh, for starting 2023. She said that it would be four matches involved for her in that. So she's going to try to see how it would work in schedule. Now, if you guys never seen Madeline, uh, look her up. She is this um, Japanese girl with uh, pink hair. She always changed her hair colors. She has a unique uh, look. So... The promotion she's in, if you guys are interested, uh, is World Woman Pro Wrestling Diana. So you guys may check her out from there. So I don't know when she'll have her return MMA match, but uh, kind of curious to see how that goes. We'll see. Now our next update, you guys may have heard the stories that uh, William Regal, he's officially done with AEW and there's reports coming in. This was coming from Wrestling Observer saying that he is on his way back to WWE. Now, I don't know if this is 100% true. Apparently, there are reports of Spout saying that there are some backstage problems with him. I'm not sure if that's 100% true. We just don't know if if that's 100% true or what it is. But we'll see about that <coughs> if, <coughs> once it reveals itself even further. Uh, so let's move on to the next update. Um, we continue on announcing the next entrant for the Battle of Los Angeles uh, by Pro Wrestling Guerrilla. They announced Black Tarus will be uh, participating in this tournament. Now our final update. This one was confirmed by um, Wrestling Observer. It turns out that Kota Ibushi's contract with New Japan will end by January of 2023. Now... I've been I texted this to many of my friends. One guy in particular saying that we may see Kota Ibushi at the Royal Rumble. This is the same kind of scenario we all thought about Kenny back in 2019. If you guys remember, many fans thought, "Oh, Kenny's going to show up at the Royal Rumble." He never did. No, but Bushi, we as you know, we've been hearing a few things about him. What's been going on? Um, his little situations with New Japan, uh, especially somebody from the Matt Upper officials. Um, he even stated about maybe possibly going to AW. Uh, we're not sure yet what he's going to do. We know he has appeared with WWE before during the Cruiserweight Classic, but um, he didn't stay for that long. He just went back to Japan. So we'll see what happens. You know, I'm, I'm a fan of Ibushi. I love what he can do. The last thing we, we haven't seen him since Wrestle Kingdom where he injured his shoulder. So hopefully he's back better than ever. But only time will tell where, he, where this leads us for us. So I think that's pretty much it. So let's just call it a day. Well, I hope everybody enjoys this episode coming up. Uh, as you know, since it's going to be Monday, we are going to do a W Dark Elevation. However, 
I will do more on New Japan Pro Wrestling. We still continue on with their annual tournaments. I'm not sure which one we're doing. I think we're doing World Tag League, but we'll see about that. But uh, we're also going to do the latest GCW event uh, only after uh, one, oh, one afternoon only. Can't wait to see that. And I think we're just going to stick with three. Um, also, I will be doing a more on the Unagi Sayaka watch. Two major uh, developments have taken place with her. Um, and that's pretty much it, what we're going to do. So, uh, we'll just go from there. And, of course, some news updates for everyone. So, I think that's pretty much it. So, I will see you guys in the next DWZ time. Same DWZ channel. I must bid all of you adieu. So, goodbye. Mwah. And have a nice day. Bang.